This afternoon, we will cover the focus of G Suite and Google Hangout Meets, and we're going to look at how to use those Hangout Meets to communicate with each other and communicate with pupils. So I'm going to share your presentation that I had open earlier. We won't all be presentation based. We'll actually do some of this live as well. So my name's Mark. I'm from Turn It On. I've been presenting a lot of the webinars recently, and we want to help you get the most from what you already have. So I would imagine a lot of people that have decided to join this call are already using G Suite or have G Suite for Education in their school. If you don't, this is going to give a flavour of what you have. I've had quite a few questions from schools that either have G Suite or Office 365 about what they should do if they've seen something they like in the other platform. We'd always advise you to think long and hard. It gets quite confusing if in a school you have two platforms that you're adopting. Uh, staff get confused, pupils get confused, and it doesn't really make for a good adoption and impact across the school. So it's a thing, if you've got a certain platform at the moment, that probably is going to be the platform you're staying with. But if you want to have a long-term transition across to a different platform, then that needs to be planned and everyone will need support and training to do that. So as I've said there, the ability this afternoon to make comments is in the chat and just be comfortable and enjoy what we're about to go through. We're going to focus primarily on Google Meet, which is called Hangout Meets, rather confusing me for the purpose of what we're doing this afternoon. Just to clear up the elephant in the room surrounding that, Google had a product called Hangouts. It existed before Meet and Hangouts was available for video and text calls. We then had an evolution of Meet coming in, and Meet is supposed to take over eventually for mainly the video and conference calling, and Hangouts is supposed to then retain the text element. The Google roadmap at the moment isn't clear about when those two products will with, be withdrawn or when they'll be modified, but just to let you know that's eventually how things are going to be. This afternoon's session focuses around two areas. So, we are going to look at reducing staff workload. We're going to look at how to maximize that communication, how to make sure that when we're working remotely, we really do still feel part of the school community uh, and that you can talk to each other. So you could use this for a quick catch up individually or you could use this for something more formal. And then the flip side of this is for teachers to be able to use this with pupils to still deliver lessons, still make sure there's learning opportunities. And we'll talk about how also importantly not forgetting the pastoral element so that you can reach out and still give that pair that pastoral care to the pupils in your class or the pupils in your school wanted to flag it again i have on all these google sessions so far that the apps that we're using are available on most tablet devices and mobile phone app stores and you just go in you can download google meet app you can download the hangouts app and then you can install them on your device. If not, you can use them as a tab in a web browser. So if you've got a Chromebook and you're a Google school, you'll be really familiar with this and it'll just be a tab in the Google Chrome web browser. If you're using a Mac or a Windows device, I would recommend using the Google Chrome web browser and installing that from Google. And then using this inside of a tab in the browser is the best experience. Something that I've flagged previously, but I want to mention again because I appreciate not everybody has been on all the previous webinars, is a service and a website that Google has called Teach for Home. I'm just going to break out the presentation temporarily. And <clears throat> it looks like this. When you scroll down, one of the things I want to emphasize that people often panic during these sessions is, Martin's covering an awful lot of ideas here and how on earth do I make notes about that or retain what I should be doing? Well, don't worry, we've got that covered for you. Using Teach From Home, which Google has launched in response to the COVID-19 crisis, there are lots of videos and here you can see Dan from Google for Education, a really knowledgeable person and you often see him popping up on the videos. But as we scroll down, you've got help sections. So here is the help section that's going to link with what we're covering today. And it's starting calls. It's really from the beginning of using Google Hangout Meets and how to set them up, how to use them. So if you forget something or if you're not quite sure from what we've covered today, you can always go to this website, scroll down. You can open up here. It will open up another tab and it goes through then how to use Meet and using your own Meet. But also, more importantly, you can get tutorials. So these tutorials go step by step broken down into small bite-sized pieces 
And a really good website there is, we had a using the Google Classroom previously, first day. There's also Google Hangout Meets first day. So if you've never touched this before, you want to go through the basics, you've got all these lovely videos, then you can go down and have more in-depth videos about how to use aspects. You can also download the PDFs that are associated with the videos so you can get them as step-by-step -step guides. So everybody that's on the call today will be supported because all those resources are there. And they're absolutely free. You don't need to even have a Google account to go and get those. So if you're not a currently a G Suite school and you're just intrigued about how this works, you want to get more support. It's there are also other areas you can cover too. If you missed the Google Classroom session we delivered previously, the Google Classroom support section is there. So I'm going to emphasize again, all the support materials, go to teach from home, have a look at Google Hangouts and Google Meets day one. It's an amazing resource that will also help you quite considerably. So those two areas are absolutely key for getting support post this call. Just going to jump back into the presentation. With G Suite for Education, you get some premium features. So with Hangout Meets, you can have up to 250 participants. So even if you're a large school and using this with quite a big class of people, with a year group of students in secondary, you can facilitate that. So if you had, for instance, uh, first set and second set of science in secondary school, and that involved 60 to 70 students, then a Hangout Meet call. If you've got quite a large staff, you could all be in the Hangout Meet call. So you don't need to worry about having the event to get people in. You could also record that meeting if it's appropriate, uh, and you can also stream it too if you need to stream the meeting itself. Before you begin, there's a few things to check, and I'll show you this in real time in just a moment, but it's here in the presentation. You want to be able to record, you need to enable it in what's called the admin console. Also, if you want to be able to stream Hangout Meets and you want to stream them from your school, it needs to be enabled. By default, those two things are disabled. So if you're thinking they don't appear for me, that's why. Also, video calling down there needs to be enabled. And then the ability to join your meets, there are links, and I'll show you those during the presentation, and there's also live stream links. Just to show you where you would find some of those features, if I come back out of there and I go back over to today's meet, down here in the bottom corner, you've got the dot, dot, dots. In there is the recording option, but also you've got your settings that you will have for your Hangout Meet. This primarily controls your computer and where your microphone audio is, it also controls your video feed and gives you a description of what you've got available. So if you've got more than one camera available or you've got more than one mic available, it's where you control it there. If you want to share your screen, hello, is that Mr... Sorry, I'm covering you up. Hello, nice to see you. <laughs> uh, if you want to also present there, you can. That's what I'm doing now in order to share my desktop. So you press that button, I've got to start presenting, but you'd get a pop-up video which just shows your desktop and you confirm you want to share everything. If you've got staff or you've even got pupils and students that are on your Hangout Meet and you want to make sure that you're inclusive, if you use turn on captions, they would have to do this their end, but you'll need to demonstrate it. But if you turn on captions, it will then capture what you're saying, as you can see there in the middle and it will start to then put the captions on the screen. You can decide what language you would like that to translate to. So mine's in English, but it would translate to various different languages. So if they're wondering what you're talking about and maybe their use of English isn't great because they're an EAL pupil, all of a sudden they've got the captions on their screen. You can't control that for them. They need to be shown how to enable it from there, but it's there as an option. So it's a really useful thing to have when you're in Hangout Meets. Lovely. I love the thumbs up. Keep the thumbs up going. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, as far as the rest of the session is concerned, I won't do it from the presentation. I'm actually going to show you various different ways. So we will go over to what I've got already open, which is my calendar. If any of you are not familiar with using G Suite because you're not a G Suite school, you've got the Google Apps launcher up here. In here, You'll have your main frequently used apps at the top. You can move these around to drag other apps up and make sure they're always available at the beginning so you don't have to scroll down. But down here, you've got what's called more apps. I've got quite a few because I'm an administrator for this test G Suite tenancy, but you probably have a few less than that. But essentially, you want to get your frequently used apps at the top.
if you want to get to calendar calendar itself for mine is somewhere lurking down here i think or if i just scroll past it it's up there at the top and you just click on it and it will take you across in another tab to calendar once you're in there you'll see there's the meeting we're involved with currently and then i have created some extra lessons so one of the ways that you can still create learning or you can have meetings with the staff in school are to create calendar events so let's say I want to preserve a after school meeting. I'm gonna click at four o'clock or at 3.30 even, and I want to have a whole staff meeting. This is about keeping the staff together. You can equally do this for having a quick catch up to so have virtual coffee mornings where you all get your coffee at home, have a biscuit and a piece of cake or a healthy piece of fruit. You have a, a break time meeting like you were going to the staff room together and you could just catch up doesn't have to always be work focus it might just be how you're getting on with isolation what you've been watching on tv what the best box set is to be involved with you set your time so you can choose how long you want it to last by clicking these boxes and change the duration so let's say it's a whole staff meeting we need a bit longer than normal because we've got quite a few areas to cover you can add guests so if there's someone outside of your g suite tenancy you can add them in and you can choose a room so if you wanted to add a particular room in school when we get back to normal uh, facilities you could also add conferencing if you want people to get it and you press save and it will save it in your calendar but it will also push it out to the people that you've invited so that's one way to get people having a formalized meeting it's quite useful if you're in a school that uses g suite you'll be used to using your google calendar and you'll be looking at it closely to see what's coming up it just lets people know what's going on you can, if you want to re-edit that, click on the pencil up there, takes you back in, and then it gives you the options to, to modify what you've already got. You can give a description or an agenda for the meeting here, write in the meeting request, or you could click that button there. And what it allows you to do is go to your Google Drive to attach files. You can also go to that tab there where you can upload files from your computer and drag and drop them in and then they will be attached to the meeting itself it makes it quite useful particularly in this time of distance learning when it's not easy to get hold of someone who just walk to the next classroom have everything in one place make it as easy as possible for people to be able to join you so if you've got any other actions that you're looking for up here you can print out the event you can duplicate it which saves you if you want to do something week on week you can also send it to classrooms which is something we'll look at in a moment so that's the first way really as staff to set up meetings and join together i'm just going to come out of there because i don't wish to modify it but it doesn't delete it it's still there in the calendar another way to use it with setting work for pupils is you can tie it in with using google classroom so i'm afraid here for people that didn't join previously uh, and weren't familiar with classroom google classroom is another app over here in the g suite apps so you can join google classroom i think my google classroom sits down here at the bottom the app looks like that when you arrive you'll see the classes that you've set up if you've missed all of this we've got recordings from the previous webinars and you can go and watch those also if you're really interested and you want to get going yourself don't forget teach from home not only will you be able to get all your resources from today and there's where the resources from today can be found but down here is everything we covered previously with google classroom so if you want to get to that it's all there for you to access going back in i'm going to go into my primary classroom that i've created you can see the calendar for your classroom by clicking those three lines over there over there on the top left hand corner is calendar and what you will see is assignments that have been set it looks pretty much the same whether you're going in as staff view or whether you're going in as pupil view and we will look a bit later at how this appears for pupils if you want to get back to your classes press the three lines again press the classes and then you can go back into your classroom and you're back where you were before you can also in classwork see for some of the things that are set so i've set my creative arts lesson i added that in this afternoon by pressing create and assignment and then i linked the event down here as a link but there are other ways of doing that and i'll show you how to do that from calendar in a moment so there's more than one way to get your calendar event or your live google hangout meet into classroom so it appears because now because i've done that I've got my creative arts lesson in my stream so all the pupils that are using the stream can easily see that and they can join in and they can 
take part in that. The way it looks for a pupil, if I switch across to another web browser, so I'm now logged in as a pupil here. I can see only the one classroom, whereas a teacher I could see multiple classrooms. I go into my classroom, I can see there that I've got my assignment and there is my class video meeting. So all I'm going to do as a pupil is I'm going to click that link. It opens up my Meet. I can't go any further because I'm already using the mic on my computer. So I'd end up with it failing and going around in circles. But it's that easy for them to quickly branch out and go round and join the meeting. They can also, because it's an assignment, they can mark it as done. They, they attended it. They could also add or create something. So if in that they are completing a piece of work for you, so I've put a base mine there around junk modeling, they could easily snap a picture and they can add that in and then they can send it back into everyone so they can see it or you can see it. So it's another use of classroom tying in with Hangout Meets. I'm just gonna pop back over to the teacher view in Google Chrome. So now I'm back in teacher side. You can see uh, back here that if I looked at my classroom now, my classes i've also got a distance learning classroom whereas the pupil that i just looked at just had the primary classroom because they were only included in the primary classroom so with pupils i'm now still in the teacher view of google calendar it works in a very similar way when i created the creative arts lesson this afternoon i'm just going to re-edit it i clicked on the time that i wanted i've got over here it's a google hangout meet I've invited my pupils along that I wanted to have in the, in the session. Up here in more actions, I just converted my calendar. So I had an option there originally saying copy to primary classroom, which is the one I'm in. I could still copy this additionally to the distance learning classroom. So I don't have to create the calendar event twice. I'm all for saving on workloads, even though we're distance working at the same time. So let's say tomorrow morning, I'm going to uh, 10 o'clock. I'm going to have a math session. And in that math session, it's going to be an event. I'm going to add my guests into that session. So I'm going to add my pupils. So I've got David Bowie as one of my pupils. I've also got dear old Freddie Mercury as another one of my pupils. And I've got somebody else who's a pop star. Oh, yes, I've got John. Pop John in there too. So now they're going to get this into their calendar on the pupil view it is a hangout me i'm setting it as a hangout me uh, i am the controller and the owner of that meeting so one of the great things that google have changed recently is they are able to use that hangout meet and join but what they can't do is after the event they can't rejoin and they can't then suddenly have this private meeting and discussion without the teacher being present so it's a safety or an e-safety feature and google have only recently introduced that once you've got that, you can press save. I want to send it out to all of their calendars because the guests that I've invited are there. So the guests are the people that I want to be there. Equally, we could have done that in the whole staff meeting with other staff that we have. Now it's in there, I could go back in and edit and I realize at the moment that's just a calendar event, but what I want to do is I want to push that into my classroom. So I'm gonna say copy to primary demo class and now that adds it automatically to my classroom. So I don't have to go through the faff of adding it in my assignment. The key is to make sure that I save at the end. We said at the beginning that we were going to use this for dual purposes. So I've got an illustration there of how it's going to be used for a lesson. Those lessons can be live lessons. I'm acutely aware of the safety aspect here. So if you're setting a live lesson, I cannot emphasize enough where possible do not have a live lesson with a member of staff delivering that lesson on their own have it so you've got two members of staff whether it is the classroom teacher and a ta or two actual members of teaching staff or someone from the slt dipping into the lesson and at the same time i'll emphasize recording one of the ways that i said to, to make sure that you have it available afterwards is to record it but it's also a safeguarding feature if the meeting is recorded when people have joined that hangout meet there, you've got evidence after the event, not that it should come to this, but what you've had in the way of discussions with pupils that are in that meeting or that lesson. And if anyone questions your professionalism, you've got a record of what you've done, but also it's really nice for the pupils because you can share the recorded meetings afterwards. So if anyone wants to know where those recorded meetings go, if 
But I go up here to Google Apps again. I went over to my Google Drive. You'll get a folder that's created when you start recording meetings. Handily, it's called Meeting Recordings. And then when you go into Meeting Recordings, you'll see all of the meetings or the lessons that you've recorded. And then you can add those back into assignments, which is something we covered in the previous session. But you can build up this gallery of learning. So if a pupil couldn't get access to a device and they weren't able to join a live session, what they can do is they can go back to their stream in Classroom and they could pick it up here to go and watch the video that's been included from the live session that they weren't able to join. One of the other things that we're going to mention over here about having live lessons is that there's been quite a bit of guidance that particularly have come out from unions recently, where unions have been quite particular about protecting members and emphasizing that they should air caution as a member of their union about joining any live session. So it's something for you to decide within your school whether you are going to have live sessions or you're going to allow pre-recorded sessions to be posted in your Google Classroom. Some head teachers have got quite strong opinions about that in one direction or the other. I'm not here to tell you, tell you what that decision should be. I'm here to inform you of how it could work, but you need to make that choice in your school and then you will have advice for the teachers that are going to be using the facilities that you have here. Another way to use the calendar are to set up pastoral sessions. So you can see there, I've got pastoral sessions for my pupils to join into. So one of the ways that you can have smaller sessions with either a group of pupils, but again, emphasizing, I would still have a couple of staff present in those sessions. So if it's possible, two class teachers or a class teacher and a TA, you can set up smaller, more personal, pastoral orientated meetings, Google Hangout Meets. The way you do that, I'm going to add it to a previous day. In here, there's something called appointment slots. If you click appointment slots, you can set a time frame when pupils could possibly have the ability of booking a smaller one-to-one -one with you, but emphasizing you've got two members of staff present. You can set the time that you're going to be available for. That might be dictated about how much time you've got at home. You can also set the length of those sessions either by clicking up and down or just over type. So I'm going to say I've only got 10 minutes per pupil and I'm going to save that. Then in here, if I went to again more options, I can push that out to my classroom so it appears in the calendar of the classroom. I'm going to resave it. But from a pupil perspective, if I go back across to good old David Bowie here and go back to my primary classroom. Uh, I've also got my calendar as a pupil, but what I can do is I can click this. It appears in my calendar because David's been invited and I go, go to the appointments page for this calendar, which opens up a slightly different view. And I wanted to make sure that you've seen this. So I've titled mine up here, pastoral session. That's the one I just did with you. I haven't titled it quite so neatly, but I can book my slot. So if I wanted to, as a pupil, get my slot, I can say where it's going to be. It's going to be uh, hang out meet because I'm not able to meet face to face but you can use this for face to face meetings maybe you've got an interventions route maybe you've got a pastoral area and then you can give a description I would like to discuss support with work you've got some emphasis on what it is as David Bowie I've now saved and booked that slot and as you can see that slot disappears for other pupils but as a teacher, if I go back across to the teacher view, I will then see I've got a pastoral booking there and it will tell me the people that the booking's with. I'm just going to pop back over to the slides. I realised one thing I didn't show you, so I will go to that now. One of the things I said at the beginning is that you'll need to set all the permissions before you start. So unless you have been given this sort of access it's quite unlikely you're going to have the area i'm in there here in there which is called google admin but the it support company for your school whoever is the it admin for your g suite in school will have what's called the google admin console if you click it when you arrive you've got lots of different options if you've got full admin access you would click apps and again, this is even covered in some of the advanced sessions in the Teach From Home. You go into G Suite and then you can see the apps that you've got available in G Suite. It's really important if it's going to work seamlessly in the way that I'm demonstrating to you now, you need to get your IT support technicians or Google 
uh, or even turn it on, raise a support ticket for us, we'll check it. You get into here and then you need to check the meet settings. In order to get into them, you press the arrow pointing down and then some of the areas that I highlighted at the beginning of this webinar, such as enabling recordings, that's where you switch it on and off. At the moment, I've got streaming disabled, but if you wanted to start streaming meetings, you click the pencil and you enable that option. So you need to check the settings in here before you start to roll this out and use it on mass with either staff to staff or staff to pupils and students. It's a really important thing to check. It causes a lot of frustrations with staff that are trying to use Google Hangout Meets if it just doesn't work as expected or as I've shown on the webinar. So getting somebody to check those in there either on your behalf or you checking them if you've got access yourself is really of paramount importance if you want a smooth run out for this. As far as this afternoon session is concerned, we're trying to keep these in small bite-sized chunks. So I'm not going to overwhelm anyone with any other aspects of Google Hangout Meets. What I am more than happy to do now is open up the questions that you may have. So it's an opportunity to unmute your mic. If you've asked anything in text, Ellie will have received that so she can also add it in here. But I'm going to throw it open to you and I'm happy to try and answer anything that you've got going on at the moment. Just going to have a look at the chat. Hi, Matt. You... Sorry, go on. Sorry, it's Kay from Swanbourne Church of England School. Um, Hello, I've... Kay again. Hi, I've had to um, do this call via the telephone because I've not managed to get into um, my Hangouts. Um, I'm not quite sure why because I normally use it personally. Um, is it something that you have to connect to a particular email address and if you want to use it via a different email address, you have to re-log in or something? No, it should be as simple as in your calendar. I appreciate you can't see this, but I'm showing it for the benefit of everyone else when I reshare my screen. Hold on a minute, everyone. I'm just going to reshare. So really you kind of can yeah, just do it under one email address. You don't need to have loads of different ones or keep no. logging it out depending on <laughs> what entity you're joining it as. Absolutely not. A bit like I said yesterday on the other webinar, we'd encourage governors or staff to have an yeah, we official have email address. Yeah, we have governor email address, um, so that's all fine. That's set up. Okay, Good. that's lovely. So it's probably more of an issue my end. <laughs> Thank it you. It sounds like it, yes. Yeah, thanks. I would also say to everyone on this call, the way that we're hammering technology at the moment and we're all working off of broadband connections at home that were never designed for this sort of use, some of the features will fall over. Some of them won't work as expected. Even with me doing this webinar as a trainer, I've experienced so many technical hitches or blips over the last few days. If all else fails, it's the good old turn it off, turn it on again, or restart your web browser and see if that makes a difference. Sometimes services have what's called an outage during the day, and then they come back later in the day. It is frustrating. It's not perfect, but sometimes it's just the way it is. I can see uh, Nard and Noddy has answered the Google Drive question. So your Google Drive is your personal Google Drive. You can have shared drives in school, but that's a whole different session if you were setting those up. But those would be commonly available, but your Google Drive is only available to you. Any other questions that anyone wants to unmute and ask? There was one question, Martin, about can you change the language of the captions? on? You can. So let me go back down. The captions, forgive me in my in my brain at the moment, but the captions language setting is in the admin center to involve uh, to enable how to change languages for that. You would also choose the languages for you as a user, what your primary language is and what your secondary language is, so that you can then have the options down here as to what your translation language is. I'll be absolutely honest, off the top of my head, I can't remember this very second where to go in the admin console in order to set that, but it is possible to change that, yes. Any other questions from anyone? I'm just going to check the, the questions in here. So someone's asked about the recording. Yeah, if the recording's enabled, you'll see the button. Even us has turned it on when we first started using this, the dot dots over here. We didn't have start and stop recording, and that's because it wasn't switched on in the admin area that I showed you just a moment ago. So if you're missing an option out of the dot 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 menu here, normally because it's been disabled and you haven't got it then allowed or available to you. 
Just going to check any more questions that are coming in. Aha, uh -huh. Mr. Cornish, thank you. You are a lifesaver. You've put the language uh, link in there. So anyone who wants to click that, you can follow the, the link there that he's posted. Can you have two or more presenters from different uh, locations? Yeah, you can. You just have to take it in turns uh, with uh, desktop sharing. That's fine if you want to do that. But you could both have your microphones unmuted at the same time. You can both have your video cameras enabled at the same time. You could both be talking or take it in turns to talk and not being rude and talking over each other. So you can have them from different locations. You don't have to be in the same room. Uh, this is meant truly for working remotely or if you couldn't be in school. So maybe you've been at a school doing some outreach work or you've had to go to a meeting, but you've gone home to join the whole staff meeting. That's the sort of scenario this is normally designed for. But we find ourselves in quite a unique situation that we're adapting the use for. Any other uh, audio questions? Anybody want to ask anything? OK. Hey. Question, sorry, Martin, just come up about um, downloading. Can you download the videos? Can anybody download them? And can children, could children potentially share them outside of school? Yeah, the videos. So as far as the videos go in your drive, the videos in your drive, your drive is your drive, it's private. So you can share it if you wish, and you can share a link out to someone. So I've shared, for instance, this video here has got the two people next to it, and it says shared because I shared that with Ellie, who's on the call with me, because I wanted to give her access to the video, but otherwise it's not. If you're putting it into your classroom and you're making it available against the lesson, you can either make it so that you can't download it or you can download it. I would say just to protect anyone outside of your school, you could you can set it so you can't download. Uh, again, you're going to need to set that up on the Google Admin Console side first to enable the options that are available in the classroom for people that are members the classroom people that are owners of the classroom so by default people that are owners like teachers would be able to take videos out and use them elsewhere but members couldn't and um, hi is there a way that the children have a tutorial as well like a student tutorial for them to know how to use it yeah a lot of the schools are adapting the tutorials that are in here or creating their own versions at the I haven't seen anything from Google itself, and I was on a Google call only yesterday that is child specific as far as guides are concerned. I think most people are going to those tutorials, the let's get started, and then trying to get video links like that so that they are quite visual uh, and then put those embedded into the classroom. You almost create over here in your classroom, create a section. And then you can keep promoting that help section back to the top, particularly in the first few weeks, for them to be able to watch those self-help videos and get those visual prompts of how to go through and get the help. Any other questions? Okay. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen at that point and I will hang around here on the Google Hangout Meet, just in case you've got any further questions or you want to ask it as people drop off. But I want to say again, thank you to everyone that's participated today. We are going to keep these going. So we will, after Easter, we're going to have a break over the Easter holidays, but after Easter, we'll have more Google meetings. We'll also have more of the Microsoft meetings for the webinars. So we'll focus on different aspects of either G Suite or Office 365, and we'll explore how they can help you where you're in the distance learning situation or how to work with colleagues to feel stronger community sense, but also how to help pupils learn. I thank you to everyone that's joined. I appreciate your time. And as I said, I'll be here in case you want to ask anything. There's another question just come up, Tom, uh, Martin, sorry, saying, Thanks. can organisers turn off user videos? Uh, disable them together. OK, let me go into here. Uh, I found someone with a video. Sound. Yeah, what you can do is block their sound, but you can't block their video. You can remove them from chat. So if I reshare my desktop a minute, uh, hold on a second. I'll share again. So you should be able to see my desktop again. If I went to the participants tab at the top here, just let it represent. 
So if I went up here to the participants tab, so if this was a couple of classrooms of children, but on, on there, you can see me and I can see my own video. I can see you all as participants. There's a little arrow next to each participant. You press the drop down. You can mute someone if they aren't muted. So I've got very polite people here that are all muted, but you can press that button and it will mute them. You can also pin someone to the top of the section if you want them to be up there. So maybe it's a co-presenter, but you could also press that button. So essentially you kick them out of the classroom or kick them out of the Hangout Meet and that gets rid of them. But there isn't an option yet that I've seen from Google about muting video. You have to just politely ask people and remind them about etiquette of being on a Hangout Meet and say that, okay, there will be times when it's great to see each other. And that's particularly with staff. It makes people feel more connected when you can see each other, but it's not appropriate necessarily if you've got pupils all, all seeing each other, particularly if they're in a busy situation where they're at home, they've got things going on behind them. Maybe they've got other younger siblings. There might be inappropriate pictures on the wall or something happening. So always encourage with a classroom scenario. Yeah, just like that, Mr. Cornish. Uh, always encourage with a classroom scenario that pupils have their webcams disabled and it's only the adults as the teachers enabling their webcams. It's for a safeguarding e-safety point of view as well. Got possible more questions. Well, they could just be thank yous. They are just thank yous. Any more questions over in here that I can answer? I'm happy to try and answer anything at all. No, getting lots of lots of no's and shakes of heads. Ellie, at that point, I think we can stop the recording, but I will remain in here just in case anyone wants to talk to me. Thank you, Mr. Cornish.